This week started on a legal constitutional note with the um, appointment committee hearings of uh, the Supreme Court justices nominees nominated by President Akufado for the Supreme Court. And there's been major court cases and court rulings, some of which we are discussing on this program, as you are aware from our poster. We're looking at the contempt uh, conviction of the Auditor General, and we're going to look at other matters. But tomorrow, uh, just before I talk about tomorrow, I have to talk about the vetting, the appointment committee hearings of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, legal elephant, Yoni Kulendi, who appeared before the appointment committee hearings today, he was spectacular in his expressions. And uh, I think that a lot of things he said should be documented for law students to have a look. Congratulations. Um, and congratulations in advance to Justice of the Supreme Court, Kulendi JSC, as he will now be known, a Justice of the Supreme Court. And everybody uh, who was watching was excited by his candidness and his forthrightness before the appointment committee. Uh, later on, my guest in the studio will be talking about Amadou Tanko as well and other judges who appeared before the Supreme Court. Congratulations, Alhaji Amadou Tanko. He has been approved by Parliament, ready to be sworn in by the President as a Supreme Court judge. And uh, it's good for the Islamic community in this period of Ramadan. Uh, we say congratulations to Amadou Tanko. But tomorrow, there's a big matter before the Supreme Court, and they're going to hear it. It's a matter that impinges on politics. It's a matter that impinges on corruption. It's a, a matter that impinges on the chase of public money and is a matter that impinges on the qualifications of a man. His name is Martin Amidu Benz Kaiser. Uh, he, is been, he has been nominated by the president, as you know. And uh, if we want to check the date, on the 14th of November in 2017, Parliament had the opportunity to pass the Office of the Special Prosecutor uh, Act. It was passed. And uh, on the 11th of January 2018, Ben Kaiser Alamisi Amidu was nominated by the president. But somewhere along the line, he has been challenged in terms of his qualification for the job. Tomorrow, seven justices will pronounce on the verdict, whether Martin Amidu can go on or whether Martin Amidu will be removed from his office in Laboni back to his house in Medina uh, to spend the rest of his retirement. The judges upon who this responsibility falls uh, his Lordship, the Leonard Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Eni Yeboa himself, he'll be presiding. Then there's Mr. Justice Bafo Boni. Then there's Mr. Justice Badigbe. And then there's Mr. Justice Mafosau. Then there's Madame uh, Doji, Justice Doji. And then there's also Justice Nene Amegache. And also Justice Ni Ashi Kote. Uh, all of them will be ready tomorrow morning to deliver this very, very famous, uh, what will become a very famous judgment in the annals of the Supreme Court. We'll tell you about the case in a minute, uh, but I have to say that uh, Justice um, Nene Ambegache and Justice Ni Ashikote were both my lecturers uh, a few years ago, or is it many years ago? And uh, I remember them with gladness, both of them very, very good lecturers, and they are the reason why uh, I can say the things I'm saying. Okay. So the, the matter before the court tomorrow is quite simple. First of all, it has a very political connection. Uh, for good or for ill, this, this case has a very political connection, and it's as follows. So the plaintiff, the one who brought the matter to the court, challenging the eligibility and qualifications of Mr. Justice Martin Amidu to be the special prosecutor, is Mr. Dominic Ayini, member of parliament, and also former Deputy Attorney General under the Mahama administration. He's the plaintiff who filed the matter before the Supreme Court. Now, who are his lawyers? His lawyers are lawyer for President Mahama in the election petition case, Tony Lita. He is one of the lawyers for uh, Mr. Dominic Aini. And guess who the other lawyer is? Marietta Brew upon who is the former Leonard Attorney General of the Republic under President Mahama. So, Dominic Aini, Tony Lita, Marietta Brew upon actually you can say represents the ndc's legal juggernaut and they are, they have dropped this case before the supreme court for an interpretation and they are inviting the supreme court to pronounce that martin amidu is not qualified to be special prosecutor now all of their their strength is being heaped upon a young man a uh, bright young man i should say Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Diabo Adame is resisting the application before the Supreme Court on behalf of the government and on behalf of the president. So it's been an interesting matter. So what are they saying? What is each party saying? Now, Dominic Aini is saying to the court that on the strength of the 1992 Constitution, a public servant is able to serve 
the Republic until he's 60 years old. Martin Amidou is 66 years old at the time he was nominated by the president, 2018, so he's probably now 68. But the case has been running for two years. It's such an important case that the Supreme Court had to take time to listen to the arguments back and forth, and they are ready with the ruling, uh, the judgments tomorrow. So they are saying that Martin Amidou is 66. How can a 66-year-old man uh, be within the context of public service, which ends at 60? That's it. They say a lot of legal things, but that's the basic, I mean, for the basic uh, uh, understanding, this is what they are saying. So he should go. Okay. What is Godfrey Dami saying? The Godfrey Dami is saying, no, wait a minute. Have another look at it. There is a public service and another kind of public service. So there's a public service who has been employed as a career public servant. He is 60. But the other public servants who are not career public servants, they can go beyond 60. And he makes the argument. Would you say, for instance, that a minister who is a public servant has the age of 60? No. There are ministers who are over 60. There are ministers who are 70. You can have ministers who are 80. Godfrey Dami is saying that the 1992 Constitution did not make any provision for that category of public servants. He's asking the Supreme Court to look at public servants through two spectacles. The public servant who is the career public servant who begins at whatever age and retires at 60, employed in a career faction, retires at 60. And then the non-public servant appointed by the president to, to play the role of a public servant but he's not a career public servant, so he could be an engineer and he's minister of health. If you are a regular, what Godfrey Dami is saying is that if you are a regular public servant, you will not be an engineer and be working as a doctor. You will be a doctor, you'll be working as a doctor. You're a career public servant. You are an administrator, you're an administrator. That's your training, that's your career. But if you are the other kind of public servant, you can be an engineer and you'll be deputy minister of health. So Godfrey Dami is asking the Supreme Court to look at it in this in this context. Now, there's another leg to Godfrey Dami's analysis, which is quite interesting. He says that Article 88 of the 1992 Constitution empowers the Attorney General to ask other people to prosecute on behalf of the state. The Attorney General is the principal prosecutor on behalf of the state. But the law allows him or her, in this case a her, Gloria Kufu, to ask other people to prosecute. And that the office of the special prosecutor is captured within the context of the powers granted the Attorney General under Article 88. It is for that reason that in the law that establishes public prosecutor, it is the Attorney General who actually recommends to the President. So he's saying that Attorney General can ask customs to prosecute, can ask police to prosecute, can ask any person at all to prosecute on behalf of the state. When the Attorney General is giving that responsibility to the third party, the Constitution does not limit the age of that third party. And that Martin Amidou's Office of Special Prosecutor falls within that context. So, we don't know what the court is going to do, but this has political ramifications. So that if uh, uh, Dominic Ayini wins the case tomorrow, Martin Amidou will have to pack bag and baggage from his Laboni office, where I had the opportunity to visit him once, and go back to his house in Medina and close shop. The president would have to nominate somebody else to the Office of Special Prosecutor. Will it be a dent on the president's appointing powers? Would it be a dent on the fight against corruption? Would it be a dent on Martin Amidou's whole personality and his whole citizen vigilante crusade? I don't know. But if Dominic Aini succeeds tomorrow, Martin Amidou is out. Now, the case has been very political because NDC seems to be filing and MPP is defending. So if Godfrey Dame is able to successfully resist the matter tomorrow, if the Supreme Court rules in such a way that Godfrey Dame wins, Martin Amidou remains. If Martin Amidou remains, it means that he's now empowered to go all the way and go for his work. Politically, we know that he's dealing with the Airbus matter. Is it going to give Martin Amidou some impetus to drive into the Airbus matter? Is he going to get over himself a little bit, we don't know. But really, he seems to have been worried about the case that has been filed against him. That, those were some of his early comments, that he didn't understand why such a case was filed against him. So if tomorrow he comes out successful, is he going to look at the plaintiff and the lawyers behind the plaintiff as his opponents and therefore go after them one way or the other? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just raising issues. I'm just saying I don't know anything. So. Let's wait to see what the Supreme Court does. But the big responsibility is on the shoulders of the seven. And we hope that they will discharge it in the interest of the Republic and they will discharge it uh, according to the will of God. In the circumstances, the overall effect is that the first 
uh, respondent was validly elected and the petition is therefore dismissed. Our various judgments for the sake of convenience are handed over to the Registrar of this Court.